Yes, yeah? Are you here? Okay. Yes, yes, yeah? Yeah. All right. We're going to get started again, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your lunch and you're ready for another fascinating afternoon of wonderful information. For those of you that, that were in the room uh, for Rama, uh, you already got a bit of a taste of what uh, Cambo can do. And now Yessi is going to go into much more depth about that. She's from Oregon, and she is, I believe, the first certified Cambo practitioner in Oregon. She's very experienced with that medicine now. And <clears throat> it's not, uh, as you'll soon find out if you're not familiar with Cambo, it's not actually, actually uh, a psychedelic, but those of you that have experienced it will know that it's uh, insinuating itself into the medicine world that we're in a lot. And so we figured it was really important that you learn more about it if you don't know about it. And as you heard from Rama, it has some remarkable capabilities. And so uh, on that note, uh, I would like you to give a warm welcome to Yesia Muse. Good afternoon, I'm Yessi Amuse, and I'm speaking today about the power and the gift of non-hallucinogenic medicines, and I'm not here to dispute the power of hallucinogenic medicines, and I'm also not here to claim to know more than many of you about the intricacies of the science and culture of ancient medicines. All I can do is share my experience from my heart and share the uh, relationship that I have with the spirits of some of these medicines. So when I think of medicine, the definition of medicine, what comes to me is a substance that has the potential to bring all of our parts back into harmony. And when we are looking at non-hallucinogenic medicines, of course, we're thinking of food, of art, of music, of inspiration, and they give us the potential to recognize the magic in life, to recognize the sacredness of our being, the sacredness of everything in life, every living and non-living thing in life. Even our inanimate objects are full of energy, have spirits attached to them, and they give us the opportunity for growth and evolution as they are our tools. I like non-hallucinogenic medicines because it gives us the space to create ritual in our life where maybe we didn't have ritual before. It encourages us to, um, to have intentional living with all things, with all aspects of our being, with all aspects of life. And it helps us to collaborate with the spirit of life, with the spirit of all things, so that we can take a full conscious action, a full conscious part in our own growth, in our own evolution, in our own well-being. And yes, hallucinogenic medicines gives us this opportunity as well, but when we're working with non-hallucinogenic medicines, it's asking us to step forward and be in true collaboration with that spirit for our own health and well-being. And sometimes it's called for to be taken for a ride, to be hit over the head and told what to do and shown what's what, but that's not always the case. And uh, sometimes it's important to be given the opportunity to rise up and to meet our collaborators, our spiritual collaborators, our spiritual allies in all things, everywhere, in all aspects of our life. And so that's, that brings me to the power of combo. So what I find is probably the most important part of combo. I mean, well, there's many important parts, but for me personally, it's an, it's an ability to carry us to a space of empowerment that supports us 
in reclaiming our power, um, it gives us the, in, and by reclaiming our power, it gives us the innate ability to thrive. It brings us back to that place where we realize that we are God beings just like every single molecule of our reality. And it, it works on all three bodies. When I'm, um, part of what I talk about in my work is embodied wellness. And uh, the core of that is that there are three main bodies. There are five bodies total, but the three main bodies for now are physical, emotional, and spiritual. And true embodied wellness is being, having the ability to consciously engage all of these aspects and bring them into alignment and bring them into balance. And so Combo is giving the, us this opportunity to carry us into a space of empowerment and support us in reclaiming this innate ability to thrive. Uh, because it works on the three main bodies. It, um, the, the indigenous cultures use the word panema, which I think some of you have just heard before, which means bad spirits, bad luck, bad moods. And so in some way, these cultures knew that this medicine is also working on your spiritual body to help clear blocks and to dissolve disease and things that are out of harmony. Um, also working on your spiritual body to help release uh, karmic attachments and um, karmic patterning that maybe we brought in from past lives or that were imprinted on us in our family as we were born into our lineage. And so uh, many people ask me about the, the story or the origin or the myth of combo, where it actually came from, where it originated. And the truth is we don't know. <laughs> Um, there is a story out there uh, that was relayed by somebody that there was a chief named Kambu and there was a lot of um, disease that was going on m amongst many of the tribes and he sat with a medicine, maybe ayahuasca, and it told him how to work with the frog and how to apply the frog and he did that and all of the tribes got better. Well, my teacher, um, Karen Darke, is the founder of IAKP, where I got certified. Uh, she lived in the Amazon with 13 different tribes for three to six months each, and she asked every single one of those 13 tribes, what's the origin? What's the myth? What's the story? Where did it really come from? And all of them said, we don't have one. It's just always been with us. It's a gift of the forest. So I find that very interesting. Um, when I'm feeling into the power of non-hallucinogenic medicines, I recognize that it's giving us the opportunity to take responsibility for our own emotional journeys, uh, for our spiritual insights, for our physical well-being. And it's helping us to refine our senses and our sensations and our intuition, which then lead us to recognizing the magic in life and the spirits attached to every single thing and recognize where there is medicine in everything, in everyone. So the other part of non-hallucinogenic medicine is also empowerment and meaning into, power, meaning strength and ability. And that's really what Combo is asking us to do, to go within ourselves and pull out our own internal strength to work with the medicine. Many times people are giving their power away today in life, um, more often than not giving their power away to a medicine, um, maybe saying, here, take this, take this from me, show me this, do this for me, give that to me. And sometimes that is called for. And sometimes people are giving their um, power away to doctors. Sometimes that's necessary. Sometimes people are giving their power away to shamans, to muses. But that's not what life is about. That's not what life is asking of us. Life is asking of us to step up into the next evolutionary step and take responsibility for our wellness, 
to reclaim our power, our empowerment, to find that strength and ability from within and to pull it out and use it so that we can also be a collaborator on this planet, in this universe. So I feel like um, in this new era, this is really what we're being asked to do. We're being asked to reclaim our power and to work in collaboration with every single molecule of this reality to, to embody wellness, to activate embodied wellness in others, to find the medicine in life, of life, to use this medicine to truly thrive. And so the more that we do this, the more that we find that we are truly empowered to be fully embodied by all of our parts, by our divinity, and by our wellness. So um, I want to talk to you a little bit more about Combo, about the process. Um, I can only speak to you about what I have been taught. I have never been to South America, and I will be going in 2019, so it's very exciting for me. <laughs> um, what I've been taught by my teacher, who has lived in the Amazon for many years and lived with 13 different tribes, is that in all of those experiences that she had with those 13 different tribes, they don't really do ceremony with combo. So this is kind of a new thing. Um, I am feeling called to offer ceremony facilitation and to help people to learn how to bring ceremony into their life and how to connect to the spirit of all things in all ways. And so that's what I bring into my, ceremony, um, my combo treatments is, um, is that kind of ceremony. Uh, how they often use combo is, traditionally is kind of like a vaccine. So even babies are given combo, um, kind of as a behavioral tactic. So when they're reaching the age of about uh, two years old, the terrible twos, then they might give them a half of a point of combo, and then they throw up, they wipe it off, and then the baby's fine. It's because when the ego is starting to be integrated into the personality, uh, that's when the the terrible two start and rebelliousness starts and things that are putting us out of an alignment with our authentic being. And so then they just say that the baby has panema and it needs combo. So we don't do that in the US or in the Western countries. Um, there are definitely legalities around that. Um, <laughs> But uh, because they've been having it their whole life, their body is uh, gaining an, a, a kind of an immunity to it, so they can take a lot of combo. And, it, and because they start it so early in life, I believe that they're using it kind of like a vaccine. So they're not getting all of these um, intense diseases that we have, the cancers and the diabetes and the, and the autoimmune disorders. And I, I think that one of the reasons why is because they're having combos so often and from the time that they're so young. Um, the only time that they might use ceremony with combo is if they're preparing to go hunt or they're preparing to go to war, and then they have combo usually the entire, it's usually the men, and they have combo the entire night before, and they each person might end up having up to 100 points or maybe even more throughout the night. They have combo, they do the whole purging, then maybe some more ceremony, and then they have combo again, and they just keep on having combo all night long. So they say that it um, helps them to rid themselves of their human smell so that the animals can't notice that they're there. So it's deeply detoxing in that way. That's how we understand it. It's detoxing you of all the regular human smells. Um, and they use it as a medicine, and they use it as a vaccine, um, and they use it to clear panema, to clear anything that they would consider bad spirits or bad energies or bad luck. Um, and for them to share it with us has been a deep, deep honor. Uh, it's, it's something that they understand it is a gift that has been given by the earth, by the forest, 
to them to keep all of the tribes safe and healthy and in, uh, in contact and in alliance with the rest of the planet. And so for them to open up and share that with the rest of the world is really a deep honor and it really um, shows how much they recognize the power of this medicine. So I think at this point, what I would like to do is open up the floor for any uh, questions that people might have. Yes. What does the tree frog think of it? Right, thank you for asking that. So the frogs are not deeply harmed uh, by the collection of this medicine. I've been taught that the frogs are not harmed by the collection of this medicine, and I'll tell you more about this in a second. Um, I. The way that they collect the medicine is the tribes go out at sunrise, they put their hands down on the ground, and they make the frog sound, and they come right into their hands. They don't have any predators because they are toxic. Um, and then they just slightly scrape, take off the secretion off the back of the frog, and it goes onto a flat stick, and then that's how they ship it. And then they massage their feet, and they secrete more on their back and then they go back into the forest. And every time there's a new frog that comes to them, they have a way of checking to see if they have harvested from that frog recently, and if they have, they won't. They also don't harvest during their breeding seasons between January and April, and they help to um, seed the waterways with big leaves and things that will help them give more hiding places so that they can breed more. Um, but my question about this, and this is one of the reasons why I will be going to South America too this coming year, is um, one of my friends went to another uh, combo training that took place in the forest with a different tribe, and um, that was my question to her. I was like, oh, you got to harvest combo yourself. What do you think about it? How what was your intuition of what the frogs were feeling? Do you think they were getting hurt by it? And she said, well, it didn't look comfortable for the frog. It definitely looked like the frog was wincing when they were massaging the feet. Maybe they're pressing really hard. And the, the animals secrete that excretion to protect themselves. And so maybe if they're also afraid, they will secrete it. Or if they're harmed, they'll secrete it. So my idea is that they're massaging the feet, but it's pretty hard. It, it, I have to go and experience it myself, but maybe it's like a really hard, deep tissue massage, and they're like, ah, and then it, it helps them to secrete it on their back. But they always come back. They have the same frogs that they've just harvested will come back again, and they have to be like, nope, not this time. So um, I don't think that it harms them that much, but I, I think it's uncomfortable for them. I'll let you know when I come back. <laughs> So um, again, folks, uh, everything is being recorded and live streamed. So you really, I really ask you uh, to speak into the mic, this one in this case, and I'll run over to you and give it to you if you have a further question, if there are any more questions. Yes. Sure. Hi. Hi. I have a s similar question about um, the ethical distribution or selling, because you can just buy it on the internet. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, it is a really, um, it's a really complex topic because this is a way that we can support the tribes and the tribes do live in our society and use money. Um, I don't think that it's safe to just buy combo off the internet from anyone if you don't know the source. There are a few sources that I would trust that are online. Um, but I can tell you that my teacher has created a relationship with, with the Matsis tribe. So now they are preparing combo only for her and her students and we buy directly from her so that we can support the tribe. And the reason why she chose the Matsis tribe after living with 13 different tribes and deciding who she really wanted to sponsor was because she felt like they were in, oh, one of the most, they were in danger of dying out. One of the smallest tribes um, in the Amazon. And they're in danger of dying out because the, uh, they live, um, it's a many hour drive in one direction or another to a main city in Brazil or a main city in Peru. They're kind of on the border there. 
Um, but the young people would want to make money, so they would go away to the city and get jobs, and then they would rarely come back because there are so many things to spend your money on, and then they get wrapped up in making more money and spending their money on things, and there's no reason for them to come back to the tribe. So by doing this, she's giving all of them, including the young people, a way to make money and stay at the tribe. So they'll go away to spend their money, but they always come back because that's where their work is too. So that's the situation with the tribe that we're connected with. I can't speak to the others. Yes. Where's the placement of the medicine on the body, like when it's applied? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, could I interrupt for just one sec? Um, I was going to ask a similar question, so I'm wondering if you could actually go into more detail about the whole process. Like, is there any prep, sure. the whole water Oh, stuff, yeah, thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah, just because a lot of these people don't know about any of that. Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, okay, so the process is you would... There's no special diet, but you will be fasting for 12 hours before your sit. And so usually people sit in the morning, so you just have to fast overnight. Um, the traditional placements for the points are in the inside of the ankle or the upper arm, uh, usually the ankle for women and the arm for men. There's a funny story about this. My teacher asked them, how come, how come the women have to put it on their ankle? And they said, oh, because the, the arm is stronger. Well, it's closer to your heart, so you feel it more immediately, and the ankle gives you about 20 seconds before you feel the full thing come on. And, and she said, so why can't the women do it? And they said, oh, because the men are stronger and the women aren't strong enough. Pfft. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't believe that either. Um, but also the women have certain closed ceremonies by, that my teacher wasn't invited to as well. And they do have combo and probably other things amongst themselves and they might put it on all different places. So in IAKP, we're also blending Chinese medicine so that we can also use meridian lines and acupuncture points and ear points. Uh, we do chakra points, but on the back of the chakra, on the spine, and each, each point would uh, hyper-focus the intention, especially if it's a physical ailment, then it'll help um, go right to that place. Um, so the process is that you drink, uh, you're fasting for 12 hours ahead of time, and then when you come to the ceremony, you'll be drinking two liters of water within 10 minutes, which is a lot of water to drink within 10 minutes, and you drink it right before the medicine so that it's, the water is the vehicle to bring the purge out. Um, the medicine needs to be in your bloodstream in order for it to work. So we're making little burn marks, just taking off the, the top layer of skin. Uh, so it's a superficial burn, it doesn't bleed. We're using a, a Tibetan healing stick, a, an incense stick to make those little burn marks. And then the, uh, the way that I receive the combo is it's on a stick, a flat stick, and it's dried. So I activate it by putting water on it, and then I scrape it with the knife, and it turns into a consistency like, like glue. And we're turning them into little balls of glue, and then we put that right on the open wound. And pretty immediately, you feel the, um, the effects of it come on. So your heart rate will increase, your body temperature will increase, and, uh, and then you'll start feeling some waves of nausea. And so the purge is usually an upward purge, but sometimes it comes out both ends, so we'll always be near a bathroom. Um, but from the moment you get the first point on to the moment that you complete your purge is about 20 minutes. It's not very long at all. And you're not purging constantly through that. It's coming in waves. And so in the ceremony piece that I bring into combo is that I'm singing and drumming and rattling and coaching you through the process. Um, it's not something that most of us embrace, feeling like you've just been food poisoned. And it's really hard to sit with something like that because we've never been given an opportunity to. So uh, this is something that is offering us an opportunity to breathe through discomfort. If anyone's ever been to Vipassana, that's a piece of it. So it, it helped me a lot to have been through Vipassana before I sat with Combo because I really, I used some of those techniques.
Um, and then actually, not many practitioners do this, but I do a purge reading. And uh, I learned this from my mentor, who's the combo distributor in the US. She is an advanced practitioner in IAKP, and my mentor learned it from Karen, my teacher. Um, but for some reason in the course, they don't actually teach it. So I feel very lucky to have learned it. So I will read your purge by the different colors that you purged out. You often will purge in layers, but sometimes it's all one color. And every color is related to a different organ, which holds a different emotional energy. So you'll have some in-depth understanding about what you just cleared, what you just purged. Um, and combo is helping you to dissolve the blocks that you have put in place that's preventing you from being or calling in the thing that you have the intention for. So that's how it works. Any other questions? I'm back there, yeah. Hang on. I'll be there in a moment. So I've heard that um, combo, yeah, like clears everything. And some people have spoken about it even clearing, like if you've worked with ayahuasca or other plant medicines, that it can actually clear some of those um, energies from your body. And I was curious because, you know, oftentimes people will go into long periods of diet with a certain plant, right? In order to like mm. receive that plant's wisdom. And I'm wondering if you work with combo after you've done like a long plant diet, mm. um, if it would eliminate that from your field? Mm. That makes sense. I feel like, so I'm just going by my intuition and my experiences with the clients that I've worked with. If if you were dieting a plant that was putting, if, and it was too much, maybe you were having too much of that plant and it was putting your body out of balance, then it's gonna clear whatever it needs to to bring you back into balance. So uh, the medicine itself is actually bringing seven main peptides to your gut biome, and it's helping to rebuild your gut biome, which boosts your immune system. And as it's passing through each of your organs, it's kicking out settled toxins, even um, pharmaceutical toxins. I've seen people purge, and they hadn't had pharmaceuticals in years. Um, so. I don't feel like it would be purging the beneficial properties of the plant, but it would, be per it would be helping you to clear anything that was keeping you out of balance, out of alignment, or in dis-ease. Well, I should have stayed over there. <laughs> <laughs> I need the exercise today anyway. I'm curious if, um, from me with hallucinogenic medicines, there's often guidance, teachings as part of the journey to take back into my life. I'm curious if that's part of combo, and I'm also curious about why you got into combo, if you're willing to share that. Yeah, thank you for asking. Yes, so what is so beautiful about combo is it's not telling you, here is the inspiration or here is the enlightenment it's bringing you into a space of clarity within yourself so that you can reach into yourself and access your own inner wisdom. And um, so many people do come to this space, but it's like, how do I describe it? It's like if you just worked out for a long time and then you have that really good feeling that that everything is clear and everything is alive in you and everything is calm at the same time. Your mind is really zen and also your emotional articulation is really clear. And you see that you've stepped back from your triggers. So as you move forward in life, you might recognize your triggers come up, but you're no longer in a reactionary state with it. And so just by having that distance and being able to see yourself from a different perspective, it gives you the wisdom and the insights and the messages that you need. So the frog is helping you to get to those messages um, by maybe being your guide or being your collaborator on that journey rather than bringing the message to you, if that makes sense. 
Uh, oh, and the other part, um, my, my story. Um, yeah, so I, I've been working, I've been an energy worker and I work with several different modalities and breath work and somatic experiencing therapy and I brought everything together in something that I call, call soul embodiment therapy. And so I had been doing that for several years and I was getting a lot of benefit working with people who were recovering from trauma. Um, and then combo started showing up on my radar and I started researching about it and I saw that the experiences that people were receiving from combo, they were receiving in three days and they were very similar to the, to the results that my clients were getting but it was taking them two to three months to get there. And so that was the biggest thing that drove me and I said, if this is true, I need to experience this and if this is true, this is what I need to be giving my clients. And so then I went to experience it, and it blew me away. Like the, the very, so I sat in a three-day ceremony. It's kind of a new tradition, but the, the traditional inoculation is three times in a lunar cycle. So many times people sit for three days in a row. And so I did. And the very first time I was ever with Combo, you can really only be aware and with what is going on with your physical body. Because it's like a minor trauma to your body. It's really like immediate uh, food poisoning. <laughs> and it's crazy. And you, you just have to like be with what's here. Um, the, then the, but I felt very clear after it. I felt like I'd just been through a three week juicing cleanse or something in just a few hours. Um, but then the second day, it was really more about my emotional things and my relationships, and I could really um, feel different emotions rising up right before I was purging, and then the purge, and as I was purging, then there were maybe people or situations or memories that were coming to me, and so I was just being really present with that. Okay, this is what we're clearing, this is what we're working with. And that's when I felt that distance between myself and my triggers and just in a place of understanding and compassion for myself. And then the third day that I sat, it really felt like I was working on my energetic body. Um, sometimes people have uh, dry purges or belches. So when that happens, you're actually purging from your spiritual body. That's when you're purging karmic patterning, um, and things like that. And so when I had my third day, it doesn't happen like this in order for everyone, but when I had my third day, it was really working on karmic patterning for me, and I felt absolutely transformed after three days. And, and I really appreciated the fact that there was like, it didn't take so long, and there was like no come down or reintegration time that I needed to go through, but that I was, I felt literally like I was in one dimension and I just went, now I'm here. And I was a different person in a different dimension, but I still like remembered who I was and I knew what was going on. So I appreciated that for myself. I hope that answered your question. Was there somebody okay. over here that had a question? Oh, okay. One more here. Hi. Um, is it safe for people who are on SSRIs to take, and are there any other medications that might interfere with it working properly? Um, so there are uh, contraindications with some medicines. Most medicines are fine. SSRIs are fine, but we would need to know more details about it, specifically why you're taking those. Um, we should use caution with people who, who have extreme mental health disorders. Although, uh, yeah, that's just something that I have to take on a case-by-case -case basis because I actually don't believe in mental health disorders. I believe that's a, um, it's a disharmony uh, between the physical, emotional, and spiritual body, and the mental body is just a reflection of the health and balance of those three main bodies. So, but I also want to always make sure that people are safe, and I go by the safety pro protocols laid out by IAKP. So we have access to our um, advanced practitioners, and we also have a forum where we can ask questions and look up all medications. So the main contraindications are if you have a heart condition, you can't have combo unless it's a stint. If you have a stint in your heart, that's the only thing that's an exception. Um, also, of course, no pregnancy. Um, if there's any brain injury or stroke or epilepsy, then you can't have combo. 
And then also I always ask people what kind of medications they're taking, and then I look that up specifically and make sure that it's clear. But most medications are fine. Yeah. You're right there. Hi, just kind of following the thread of that last question, I've tried combo once and it felt like I was going to die. Yeah. And so I'm curious, is, is there a threshold of overdose? Like, is there a risk of taking too much and what would the consequences of that be? Well, yes, in a sense. Um, that's how come when we start off with people, then you're going to have three or four points to start if you've never had combo before, or if you haven't had combo in three months or more, then you'd start at those lower points. And we don't go very high in the points because if, if people need to get a higher number of points because they're... Um, maybe they're going through a protocol for cancer or something and they have to have combo a lot and you're supposed to increase the dosage by one or two points each time. You can actually just start using the acupuncture points, the meridian lines, the chakra points, because all of those are more potent than the regular placements. And if you use some of those in combination, then it'll be more powerful and you don't have to increase the number of points. What can happen is uh, combo is a, a neurotoxin. So if you blast someone with too much of combo uh, too soon, then uh, they can pass out. They could even go into seizures, but I've, I've never seen that, thankfully. Um, but it, it is fairly common for people to pass out, even if you're doing it slowly and doing the right, um, the right number of points. Uh, I, I would say probably 30% 30, 30 of the clients that I see might pass out, but they only pass out for about 10 seconds, and I'm prepared and trained to no recognize when that's coming on, and I hold them up, and as soon as they come back is when they purge. So my innate understanding of why that happens too on a spiritual level is because the thing that they need to see in order to clear the block um, their conscious mind won't accept. So it's like there's a struggle between the conscious and the subconscious mind. And so co combo just takes them out of their consciousness to get the medicine to where it needs to go. And then they come back and complete the process. But um, yes, sometimes it, people feel like they're going to die. But I, I think also some of us might have had a sickness before, had food poisoning before, or had appendicitis. I have before. I definitely felt like I was going to die with appendicitis. So you never, you know, it's, it's, it's all subjective. Um, we, I think as Westerners, we're more sensitive to discomforts and pain like that, maybe. Um, and so, and also we tend to be alarmists sometimes. And so, oh my gosh, something's wrong, I'm going to die. But I understand that that's a real fear. I think also in our culture, we also often have not fate come to terms with our own mortality. And so that, come, that can come up. Um, sometimes you might feel your throat swelling. It's never going to swell closed. Um, but you might uh, feel your face swelling as well. If you're leaned over a lot, you might get what we call frog face. It usually goes away within half an hour. Um, but yeah, th those are some of the things that, and then, and then just feeling a, a, maybe some cramping in the stomach and then feeling really nauseous and feeling really hot. Um, the times that people told me that they really thought they were going to die is when they actually had a bite of food within that 12 hours and they weren't supposed to because it causes a lot of um, harsh cramping. So I'm not sure what your experience was, but we can talk after. <laughs> we'll take one more over here. Okay. Hi. Uh, thank you. I'm interested in, in um, the pathway. I mean, you're obviously very committed to it. The one person I know who's really into it is, is like really intense. She's, she's done like 30 treatments in the course of a year or two. So I'm wondering, for you personally and for the people you see, is this something that um, will be an ongoing thing, a kind of a maintenance thing, or something that you go intensely clean out and then leave it for a year and come back to it? What, what, is, what are the pathways? Um, for a combo user. Yeah, thank you for asking. 
Um, this is a very personal decision. So it also depends on what the person is working on. If they're working on an actual physical ailment or if they're working on something emotional or spiritual. Um, I understand the, um, uh, the way that the physical, emotional, and spiritual bodies work is that if the emotional and spiritual bodies have something wrong, something blocked, something out of alignment, it's going to show up in a physical ailment. And by that point, I consider it to be a state of an emergency. Not, mm, it's not considered a state of emergency as far as uh, the medical professionals might say. But I feel like if it's showing up in my physical body, then it's already gone on too, too far. And so then we're going to treat the physical symptoms first or the physical ailment. So we do have protocols for different kinds of um, diseases or ailments or viruses. And so they might have to take it for maybe an example of a protocol might be three times in a month and then uh, once or twice a month for four months. So it just depends. Um, but oftentimes people will sit for three, three days in a row or three times in a month, and then they'll just feel, they'll just integrate, they'll see how they are in the world, and, and then they really know what it does for them, and so they'll just feel when they need to come back to it. But then if you're a practitioner, then you're really deepening your relationship with the spirit of the frog, and that's just a different... That's just a different personal thing to decide for yourself. Like, how often, how do you want to do it? I mean, in my first year, I had combo so many times in so many different ways. Um, I can't even estimate, because I never count these things. Some people know, oh, this is my 33rd time doing combo. I was like, I have no idea. I'm not even counting. Um, but I've had combo f with the different lunar cycles, which do different things. I've also sat and meditated with it and gave myself a half a point and increased by a half a point every single day. And then it didn't, it wasn't until I got up to three full points that I actually had a purge. But before that, I was just sitting in meditation with it and the symptoms, um, the sensations of it are very mild, and then it increased every day, the sensations, until it came to nausea. So one of the things that people have a concern about is toxicity levels in the body, um, because it is detoxing your organs, and that if you don't purge, that maybe it's keeping the toxins in your blood. Um, and I could see that that might be the case, I don't know for sure, but in that case, when I meditated every day with it, then it, it culminated in a purge at the end, so I wasn't concerned with it. Thank you. Yeah, thank How about you. A big hand? It's an honor. That was excellent. Very informative. Thanks very much again. Yeah, I did it once with Rama, and uh, it was really painful. She made me drink so much water, I, I didn't believe it was humanly possible to drink that much water. Um, you're, keep drinking, you haven't thrown up yet. <laughs> 